Hey guys, Cyclone back with another beer review. I went to Trillium last night to their new bar and restaurant. Um, really nice time. You can actually get some amazing beers on the menu there and even then pick up beers all the way till 11 p.m. So it's really an improvement to the last uh, version of the place at Four Point. So that's uh, very exciting. I have uh, two beers that I picked up from the store uh, last night. Um, one is their new Imperial Pom 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 Milk Stout, 10.1% Milk Stout. I will be reviewing that at some other point, but today I'm going to drink this and then head off into town. Um, this is also going to keep me nice and warm and it's very cold outside. This is Trillium's Toasted Almond and Vanilla Night and Day. Take a good look at that, guys. This is their Coffee Stout Night and Day infused with toasted almond and vanilla flavors. Now, they were offering a couple different styles. I believe one was also Coco Nib and Chili. And I think there was also a Cacao version. Um, however, for me, guys, I'm a humongous fan of toasted almond coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. So when I saw this, I said, oh my God, I gotta try it. This is like exactly what I was hoping for in a, in a coffee stout. So a toasted almond coffee stout at 12.7% alcohol. Um, and then we also have the bear, the bottled on date, which they always do. Where, where is it? At least they usually do it. Wait a minute. No date? Oh. Any date on the... Well, guys. I know I picked it up at the brewery. But there's no date on this sucker. Wow. No date at all. Um... That's a first. I usually get dates on their bottles. Oh, go look at that, guys. Uh, no date on this bottle. Now, I've never had a bottled offering that was not um, one of their exclusive offerings. This is actually just a variant on an offering you can get on occasion. So perhaps it's not special enough to date, but I still disagree with that, guys. I'd like a date on the bottle. But I do know that this is no older than, uh, I'd say two weeks old at the oldest. This is a fresh bottle. So today is um, the 12th of January. In fact, this could be only a day old. I have a feeling this is around a week to two weeks old in the bottle. So I'm just going to say this was bottled in January of this year. And so I got another bottle, so I'll save that for a little bit later, but because it's a coffee stout, I want to drink them fresh. So let's get into this. Little hiss, guys. Not too bad. Beer's open. Oh, yes. The vanilla and the almond. Actually, I can smell the almond in here. Oh, that's a great sign. It smells, it smells like, it smells like vanilla covered almonds, man. Roasted malt and coffee. Tons of that coffee coming out. Woo. Let's get into this one. I'm excited. You can probably go down the center. I don't see why not. It's coming out like dark molasses, guys. Gonna get a little bit of head here. Not too bad. Some carbonation definitely in this beer. Not a surprise. Their coffee's... Oh, oh yeah, we actually have a little bit of a... I boxed it, guys. I... Oh, wow. There's a ton of... We had a little bit of a spillage. The head decided to uh, come out right after I stopped pouring, and then the head just exploded out of the beer. Did you see that? That was crazy. Normally, a head is either big or small, but this was small until I stopped pouring, and then it just expanded ridiculously. So, um, there you go. A little botch there. You know what happens, guys. I'm not perfect. Just from the taste of the of the foam, though, there's like a salty kind of element to the beer. I wonder if that's from the toasted almond. Be fascinating if there's like a saltiness to this beer. That'd be something different. All right, guys. <laughs> there you go. Oh, actually, the side of the glass still has a nice amount of stuff on it. Okay. Okay. All right, we're back in. We're we're back in the game, guys. No, Never a dull moment here. 
what do you think of that, guys? Uh, looks like a coffee stout, doesn't it? Nice pillowy bubbles of varying sizes. I do like always seeing the varying sizes of bubbles. That's a great sign. Um, lacing is already left. Why am I not surprised, guys? This is Trillium, after all. They make some of the world's best beers. Let's get into the nose. Again, the, the almond is in there. I'm actually pleasantly surprised to see that. I should say smell that. Vanilla. I'm getting a slight almond croissant scent. If you ever had an almond croissant, which I love almond croissants, and they have that, you know, little nuttiness to them and then that kind of sweet middle. But when you smell it, you smell the toasted nuts on there in addition to the croissant. I'm getting that kind of scent. Coffee is definitely in here, no doubt about it. Little hints of vanilla. Not a lot of chocolate. The almond is overpowering any chocolate notes that I'm getting, which is exactly what is advertised, so I'm not surprised. Well, I'm actually quite glad that I'm getting what was on the bottle in the nose. Let's see how this really tastes, though. Let's, let's dive in, guys. That's delicious. That's very delicious. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so delicious, guys. Wow. Wow. Nice roasted presence is still here. The toasted almond sweetness is all over it. That's awesome. I'm getting the the slightest hint of booziness, slightest, but it's ver it's almost unnoticeable. The mouthfeel is not quite as syrupy as PM Dawn, but again, this is the night and day. I don't feel like it's as syrupy of a body. It's a little bit more of an intermediate syrupiness. It's not like coating my palate completely. I'm impressed by how much the almond is coming through, though. It's Wonderful. There is that coffee syrup vibe that I got in PM Dawn. And again, I've never, I've never actually had the original Dan. I jumped right to this one because of the, the featured flavor. I love toasted almond. And um, this is definitely featuring it. I mean, we're getting some nice lacing left to the glass. I mean, this is a very carbonated beer. Um, it's really impressive. Mm. There is enough syrupiness here, though, to give me that sensation. It's definitely a syrupy beer. There's maybe a bit more carbonation in this beer than the PM Dawn had, and that's why maybe I'm not seeing thinking of it as syrupy, but there's plenty of syrup. A little bit of dark roasted chocolate in there. Definitely get coffee, no doubt. Not a whole lot of hot bitterness on this beer. There's just a little bit dancing with the coffee flavor. It's not really present. Like if you had breakfast out by Founders, you'll taste the hops. These beers don't usually have that high bitter factor. The hops are, are, are kind of hidden um, behind a malty roasty taste. Uh, the the toasted almond is way up in your face. Toasted almond and vanilla notes are just playing around just wonderfully. Oh, yeah. Toasted almond. Uh, man, this is a toasted almond coffee beer. They finally made it. <laughs> I love toasted almond at Dunkin' Donuts, guys. This has that almond flavor. Like almond cake or, or again, an almond croissant. Hey guys, Cyclone back here uh, with the Toasted Almond and Vanilla Night and Day by Trillium Brewing. Wonderful beer, guys. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I will say this. The beer is priced 
at $17 for this big old bottle right here. Um, that's a great value. 750 milliliter at $17 is a bargain, guys. It's a steal. Uh, a beer of this quality could easily be over $20 in the same size bottle if you bought it at a store. But getting it at the brewery, you get it a little bit cheaper because there's no shipping involved or anything like that. So uh, this is very, very good. On the price, the package, the beer itself, uh, wonderfully nutty, balanced beer featuring roasted character, a nice syrupy, dark chocolate undertone. Uh, and again, that toasted almond, uh, almond cake and biscotti-like flavor, that nuttiness is in the beer. Vanilla is adding an accent to it. It's very nice. Not a lot of chocolate taste, like milk or even very indulgent chocolate. If there is chocolate, it's on the bottom and it's with the syrupy, malty experience of the beer. It's very tasty. Very well balanced. No alcohol to speak of. Um, the mouthfeel is a little bit under the ultra syrupy category. It's like the next level down. It's it's moderately syrupy, but not extremely syrupy. The flavors, they do cling to your mouth. I get toasted almond and coffee, but down here, I'm not getting a lot of stickiness to the palate. But I do taste the coffee and the toasted almond in my mouth. It's great. The flavors do linger, so that's very nice. Um, I will say the coffee notes might be a little bit less extreme than maybe their PM Dawn, for example, where I felt like the coffee just blows up in your face. This one is a little bit more subdued. The nuttiness comes forward and kind of makes the whole thing a more balanced package. This is a very balanced, wonderfully indulgent coffee stout. It's very delicious, and it's well-priced. The only thing is it doesn't have a date on the bottle, and I know that's a nitpick. It's at the brewery, but I don't know. I've gotten dates on their other bottles um, for beers that are more exclusive, and maybe they went all out with those and don't want to bottle these date these bottles because they're more of a rotational offering. But I would like to see some sort of date on there. It's delicious. Toasted almond and vanilla, a biscotti biscuit-like character. Dark chocolate and coffee syrup on the bottom. The coffee is in here. Don't get me don't get me wrong. The coffee's definitely here. It's being featured. But the nuttiness balances the beer out a little bit more so that the coffee doesn't overpower everything. So all the featured flavors are in here and they're they're being expressed very neatly and very uh, evenly. So a very even beer. Wonderfully, wonderfully done. Why can't I give this a 100? Uh, I'm going to probably give it a 99. Uh, because I wanted to see a date of some kind or even a, a batch number or something. Uh, that's the only nitpick I have. Other than that, it's a 100. And I know they can date their stuff because they have dated bottles before. I know they can. Mmm. That beer could easily sell for over $22 or $23 at a store. That tastes better. There's a little bit of the dark chocolate now as it's been warming. It's been building up a little bit more. But the vanilla and toasted almond have, have, have just stayed the whole time. It's wonderful. It gets a 100, guys. A 100 for me... Um, in my ultra critical stance is a 99 because there's no sort of date or anything like that on the bottle. But the beer itself is a 100, no doubt about it. Let's go to Beer Advocate and see what they have to say. I have no doubt that there will be a disagreement, as I always have with them. Uh, I usually rate the stuff higher than some of these people who nitpick beers. Like, oh, there was too much of a, of a roasted character on the beer. Well, it's a coffee beer. Whatever example, you know, where someone rates a beer poorly because of, I don't know why that wouldn't be a 100 for a coffee, a toasted almond and vanilla coffee stout 
at 12.7%, everything I'm looking for is here, like perfectly. Mm. Just like PM Dawn, I love their coffee stout. They do coffee stout almost to the dessert category where it's so syrupy and it's so roasted and so delicious. This beer brings the malty nuttiness out and balances that a little bit more so it's not quite as intense in your face. And I think that's a really nice balance. I think it did what was advertised very nicely. So let's take a look and find this beer. Um, night and day. Okay, it's getting a 4.38. Outstanding. I would like it a little higher, but that's still a pretty good score from Beer Advocate these days. And we only have, just to give you an idea, we only have three r reviews. One guy gave it a 3.96. This guy says there's a lack of vanilla. I disagree. I, I taste vanilla all in this beer. I don't know what he's looking for. I get vanilla. It's not vanilla ice cream. It's vanilla extract. And I get tons of vanilla extract in here. Oh, yeah. Dark chocolate, vanilla extract, coffee, toasted almond. Uh, biscotti, like malt flavor. Very nice. Um, this guy gave it a 4.84. I think it's more like that, you know. This is definitely an A+. Plus. There's no doubt about it. I don't know what people are looking for when they taste this beer, um, especially at the price. Very good price, very good beer. Uh, that's going to be my review, guys. Cyclone signing out. See you on the next one. Hey, guys. It's Cyclone. I have my second beer review from my Trillium Hall this weekend. And uh, this is a brand new beer as well. But this one is the first time they've done this iteration. This is the Pom Pom Pom. This is their 10.4% Imperial Milk Stout. The Pom Pom is a little bit too light for me. It's like a 6.5%, I believe. I'll have to review that exact ABV. This is the Imperial version, and this is the version I was looking for. So they actually made it. It's brewed with lactose. Um, we have a canned on date, 1-11-19, and today is the 12th. Guys, this beer is not even a day old. Um, amazing how you can have a beer this fresh. I, I was lucky enough the night I decided to go, they released this beer the same day. So I was able to get two packs of this, and uh, so I have uh, seven more cans waiting for me after this one. Uh, let's see what it has to offer. I've never had the original, just FYI, but if I'm looking for a milk stout, I want a nice sweetness to the chocolatey roasted malt character. And if I get all of those things at a 10.4% with minimal alcohol burn, I'll be very, very happy. And maybe we'll even get some dark fruit on this one, maybe some raisin or prune. Something of that nature. But let's find out. I'm very interested to see what an Imperial Milk Stout from these guys has to offer. The original, again, I, it's, a, it's a fairly available offering, but it's a little bit light for me. It's like 6.5%, and for me, stout is something that has to have some meat to it, some, some thickness. Because it's a beer that you want to indulge on and really get that mouthfeel. So let's see what it pours. Oh, pitch black, guys. Eh, no, it's a very, very dark brown. If I'm reassessing that pour. All right, let's... Uh, I'll, I'll leave a little bit left in the can there. Completely pitch black, of course. <laughs> I don't expect any light to come through in a Trillium beer. That would be kind of amazing if, if uh, their Stouts or IPAs had light coming through them. I'd be like, what is this? Oh, man. Just tons of dark chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate, guys. I'm just smelling dark chocolate. I don't really smell anything complex right out of the fridge. Maybe a hint of raisin in there if I really look for it. No, the head's already dissipated. Look. Again, this is a 10.4. This is a this is a heavier milk stout, so. I bet the taste will reveal everything, guys. I am getting kind of a raisinette scent on the on the you know original 
profile here out of the fridge. When it warms, it might release some more dark fruit or maybe even some different malty characters like uh, tobacco or, or dark licorice or something of that nature. But right now, it's, it's, it's bringing out just some nice dark chocolate and some raisinette, raisin type of scent. Yeah, pretty subdued compared to some other stouts, but I have no doubt that it'll taste uh, with a lot of different flavors. So we'll see what it has to offer on the palate. That's a chocolate bar in the glass. That's a dark chocolate Hershey bar melted into liquid. Yeah. Mm. Rich body, like a slight carbonation, but not too much. It's a little bit more syrupy than it is carbonated. It's just liquid dark chocolate. Like th th that is liquid dark chocolate in the glass. Wow. Literally, it literally tastes like a dark chocolate bar melted. Like I can't. Yeah, you get some of the malt in there. But really, that's dark chocolate in a glass. That that's no alcohol, zero. It's smooth as hell. It's syrupy. It's it's just thick. It's molasses and chocolate in a glass. The lactose, the lactose that's in here. You ever have a dark chocolate truffle and the inside that you know, liquid chocolate middle, that's what this tastes like. 100%. It tastes like dark truffle chocolate. That's exact. It's a dark chocolate truffle melted down into a beer. It's extremely smooth. It's extremely drinkable. It's actually kind of scary for a 10.4 how smooth that is. It's you can't even really tell it's a 10.4. It tastes more like a 7. The mouthfeel is maltier and syrupy, which is why I would think of it as an impurity. Again, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm a sucker for imperial and bourbon barrel-aged stouts. It's my favorite style of beer. Um, call me an alcoholic, whatever you want, but these beers have that thick, rich body to indulge on. And then when you mask the alcohol so perfectly, you just get those delicious flavors. All the malts and the roasted character comes out. You know, if they've added any sweetness or other flavors, you get those. But on this syrupy body, which Trillium is nailed. I mean, guys, no lacing doesn't mean it's a bad beer. Everyone says, oh, is there lacing on the glass? No, there's no lacing. But guys, this beer is outstanding. Man, if you like dark chocolate, you have to go out and buy this or trade for it. It's dark chocolate in a glass. It's just pure dark chocolate. Um, maybe a small raisin profile uh, is creeping in. And maybe some molasses too. I'd say molasses, raisin, and dark chocolate are your features here. Zero bitterness, zero alcohol. It's just malty roasted dark chocolate melted down in a syrupy profile. It's delicious. The aftertaste is, let's see what ha if it's lingering at all. Definitely molasses. Definitely molasses and raisin and dark chocolate. The lactose is only adding to the dark chocolate. There's not really milk chocolate in here. So if you were looking for milk chocolate, 
I'd say the roasted character is keep is preventing it from tasting too much like milk chocolate, in my opinion. Although this has quite a bit of chocolate on it, you're not going to be disappointed if you're just looking for any sort of chocolate flavor on the beer. This is like a semi-sweet chocolate, and it's really delicious. The molasses and raisin are coming through, and the chocolate. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting raisin, black molasses, and, and dark chocolate um, on a syrupy body with zero alcohol. And really, the hops are, are not... There's no bittering characteristic here. The dark chocolate just tastes roasty. Roasty dark chocolate. I mean, you might look at this beer and say, it looks disappointing. There's no lacing. Don't let the look deceive you. This has lactose in it. Um, that may attribute to a lack of lacing. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it might. Don't ever let that d d decide what your beer tastes like. It's what you taste in the beer. Uh, a visual might imply a couple of things about the malt profile, but it's not everything. Liquid chocolate, guys. Black molasses. It is a dark chocolate raisinette liquefied. It's very delicious. It gets a 10. I can tell you it's a 10 from um, the fact of the ABV and what it's supposed to be. It's delicious. You get that milkiness, but it's it's roasted. It's it's raisinette dark chocolate. It's beautiful. Very, very tasty, very delicious. Um, it's a 10. I, I can't decide, uh, I can't say anything else about it other than it's a 10. Uh, let's look beer advocate right now. Again, this beer just came out, so it may have no reviews. Let's find out. The original has reviews, but the Imperial just came out a day ago, so I'm I'm kind of doubtful if it has uh, anything significant. We can go compare the original, which is like, you know, half the ABV of this one, and see what they say. Uh, again, that added malt, that syrupiness, I'm, that's what I'm looking for in a, in a stout, which is why I, uh, I don't really care for the original. So, so interesting. The original is a 4.1 with 114 ratings. That's not a lot. 6.8% on the original Pom Pom. The Pom 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 has one rating at 4.84. Guys, the 10.4% version, this is the one to get. This is outstanding. This is the, if you take a look at the label, the Pom Pom Pom, this is fantastic. Liquid dark chocolate in a glass. So smooth. Raisinets. This guy agrees. This guy says raisinets, dark caramel, toasted toffee, cold brew coffee. Yeah, there is a little bit of coffee in here. A little. I do get it on the malt profile. This is outstanding. From Imperial Milk Stout, it's as good as it gets, guys. I'm giving it the 100 um, I'd say if you can get your hands on this pom pom pom, you should get it. Uh, it's obviously the superior version to the regular because it's it's been enhanced at a 10.4% ABV. It has more of the malt, the syrupy body, and the chocolate and raisin flavor is all in this beer. I didn't even have to let it warm up to tell you what it was. That might in, in, you know let you know it's fairly straightforward, but it's so good in what it offers. I can't help but give it the 100. It's delicious. It's everything advertised to uh, perfection. So, uh, guys, 100 from me, pom-pom-pom, delicious.